Hello, friend. Steve! Anybody home? In here, Homer. I never did see it so cold and just a week before Christmas. You know that mailbox of yours froze up tight? Help yourself. <laughs> Thanks. I uh, see the foolishness has started already. You got all yours mailed? You know me better than that. Blasted waste of time and money. Christmas cards. Ha! A lot of nonsense. A lot of headaches. Especially for us to tote some mail. Well, I ain't complaining. Here's some of your Christmas spirit. Listen to this. Season's greetings from Andy Gilmore. <laughs> Nothing about the ten dollars he owes me. Hi, Chapman. Hi, Ted. <laughs> well, at least he remembered you. <laughs> Hello, boys. Hello, Mr. Morgan. Hello. Hi there, Rod. Dummy. Hello, Mr. Lake. Hello, well, Mr. how Morgan. come you youngsters are not out sledding weather like this? I wanted to see if Prince was warm enough. <laughs> You've taken quite a shine to him now, haven't you, huh? He's the best pony ever was. Did you get that letter I put in the mailbox yesterday? Well, now let me see. Uh, who was it for? Santa Claus. I asked him for a new sled. My old one got busted. Yesterday, you say? I'm sure you'll get it in time for Christmas. Well, I gotta be going. So long, everybody. Bye. Bye. Come on. Come on. Want to saddle him while I get the Shetland ready? We're not going riding today, Mr. Morgan. Huh? I wanted to see if Prince was all right. What makes you think he wasn't? I just wanted to be sure. I brought him an apple and some sugar. You keep that up, you'll spoil him for anybody else. How come you're not riding him today? I'm saving my money so I can buy him. Oh, I see. Well, I don't know. He's still for sale, isn't he? For the $75, like you said. Yeah, I expect he is, but it's a lot of money for a boy. I'm saving up my money, and my father's helping me. Oh. Well, you, you better get a move on before Prince dies of old age. Donnie, if I own Prince, do you know what? I get up early every morning and curry him and feed him, put ribbons in his mane. And I'd ride him every day so he'd get plenty of exercise. Can I ride him too? You'd fall off a big pony like Prince. Oh, I like Sharon's better anyway. They're all right when you're little. But Prince, he's the most wonderful pony in the whole world. Mr. Blaine. It's mighty cold. You want to come in and warm up a minute? Thanks. No, I can't take the time now the Christmas rush has started. Oh, before I forget it, I've got a letter from Donnie here, addressed to Santa Claus, and it says something about a sled. Oh, yes. He was telling me about it when I saw the two of them over to Morgan's just a while back. <laughs> I never did see youngsters so taken with ponies. Yes, that's about all they talk about, especially Rod. Yes, he seems to be mighty fond of that little Prince pony of Morgan's. Yeah, he's been asking me to buy it for him for almost a year. I wish I could afford it. Money doesn't grow on trees. No, and Steve Morgan is no man to dicker with, especially this time of the year. You know, I never did see a man get so riled up around Christmas time as he does. Well, I guess there's some things that a man like Morgan just can't forget. Yeah, I expect you're right that way. But I don't know if I blame him without kith or kin to his name. Well, I ain't gonna be shaking a leg. You know, the more I take out of this pouch, the heavier it seems to get. <laughs> Goodbye, Homer. Goodbye, Mr. Blaine. The Anderson. They always have the nicest cards. Isn't it lovely, Austin? Mm-hmm. Well, look at this. 
Money order for $75 from Betty. A money order? Yes. Oh, listen to this. I remember how Rod had his heart set on that pony last summer. And I'd like him to have it as a Christmas present from his doting aunt. Well, that just about solves everything. I can't think of anything Rod would rather have. A pony? A yeah, prince, the one he's always talking about. Betty sure is a peach to do this. I dare say. But Austin, don't you think we ought to give it a little thought? Well, what's there to think about? I'm sure your sister Betty meant to be generous, but I doubt if she realized the trouble she might be stirring up. Oh, Donnie? Mm -hmm. It might spoil everything we've tried to do. Well, put yourself in Donnie's place. Wouldn't you feel slighted? You know, he likes ponies, too. Well, what boy doesn't? Well, I'm sure he'll love that roll top desk, the mechanical training. Don't forget the new sled. No, it's not the same. A pony's alive. It's, it's something to care for. But this is a present to Rod from his aunt. It isn't as though we were playing favorites. That's just the point. Don't you see, Austin? A thing like that would make it all the more obvious to Donnie that Rod's only a stepbrother. That his real father's dead and, and you're only a stepfather. It would be the very thing we agreed we'd never do. We'd be doing it on our very first Christmas together as a family. Julie, I've thanked God many times that since Rod's mother passed on, you've been a real mother to him. And Rod and Donnie are growing up as brothers. I wouldn't do anything in the world to change that. Do you really think that Rod getting a pony could affect that? Donnie's only a baby. He couldn't possibly understand. There's no two ways about it. Rod would have a pony and Donnie wouldn't. Well, what do you want me to do? Send this back to Betty? I'd sooner see you do that than let it come between the boys. On the other hand, maybe we could use it to, to buy one of those little Shetlands and let them both share it. Rod's too big for a Shetland. Besides, Prince is the only pony he cares anything about. That sounds for all the world as if you're thinking only of your son. Julie, our son. They're both ours. I wish your sister would try and remember that. Sometimes she acts as if Donnie just didn't exist. Well, I'm sure she didn't Let's mean to. Let's not discuss it any further right now. It's far too important for any snap judgments or decisions. <laughs> Please. Please, Ruth. Certainly. A little more, dear. Mm -hmm. Mom, this is the only apple left. You may have it, but I don't know where you'll find room for it. I wasn't going to eat it. I wanted it for Prince. Maybe so many apples aren't so good for him, son. Mr. Morgan says they won't hurt him. Besides, he loves apples. Quite a luxury, I'd say, with prices the way they are. And sugar, too. I can't keep a bit of it in the house. I should think a boy your age would find other things to do besides mope over a pony. I think ponies are most fun than anything. Don't you, Daddy? Seems like a dig up Lodge gonna let me ride Prince. Aren't you, Lodge? Maybe we will never have him. I bet you we will. I bet you Danny will help, too. Morning, Mommy. Big ponies like Prince cost a lot to feed, don't they? Me and Rod will look hard, so I'll never be hungry. Won't we, Rod? I'd never worry about feeding him once I owned him. Well, Shetlands are nice, too. Shetlands are too little for Rod. Anyway, Prince is the only one Rod wants, isn't he, Rod? Yeah. You children help bring the rest of the dishes. And I could do with a bit of help in the kitchen, too. Well, hop to it, you two. Hold your napkins down. Put them in the rings. God bless Daddy and Mommy and Donnie in Jesus' name. And please help me, dear God, to find some jobs so I can buy Prince. I promise I'll always take good care of him. Please help me, dear God, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless Mommy and Daddy and Lord. Keep me safe in Jesus' name. Please, God, let Rod have his point for Christmas. Amen. Mommy, I'm thirsty. How many times?
times must I tell you, get your drink before you go to bed. I was a thirsty man. I'll get it for you, son. And I'm sure you know better than to pray like that. We aren't supposed to pray for just things. We mustn't ask God to do this or do that just because we want something, even though we want it very much. And besides, Rod, just asking for gifts for ourselves at Christmas time isn't the right thing. Christmas is the birthday of Jesus, our Savior. He wants us to think of him and, and to think of others, not just ourselves. Understand, Rod? Yes, Mom. Thank Good you, night, Daddy. Daddy. You're welcome, son. Sleep tight. Good, Good night, now. Good night, Daddy. And Donnie. Hmm? I wonder if your prayer wasn't just a little selfish, too. The pony wasn't for me. I was for Rod. So Rod could do that, Mommy? Good night, Dad. God knows best what's good for us, Donnie. And if he wants Rod to have a pony, I'm sure that in his way and in his own time, he'll see that Rod has it. In time for Christmas, Mommy? When he wills it, dear. Now, good night. And God bless you. Bless you, too, Mommy. <laughs> God's angry with us? I don't think so. I asked him because I knew you wanted Prince so bad. I was only trying to help. Better get to sleep now. Night. Night. They're both asleep now. Did you remember to get stamps today? Yeah, they're in my overcoat. You want them? No hurry. Just wanted to be sure. After hearing their prayers, I guess you realize how much that pony means to both of them. I'm afraid Donnie's been getting some wrong ideas about prayer. Well, you may be right about their praying for things. Still, they're both pretty young. You know, the more I think about it, the stronger I feel about Rod getting that pony. After hearing Donnie's prayer, I'm convinced he'd understand. Dear, it just wouldn't be fair. I don't know why you insist on upsetting the whole household over a silly pony. If anybody's upsetting things, I'd say it was you. That's not so, and you know it. I told you what I thought was the right thing to do, but you're insisting on doing it your way. You want me to buy them a Shetland. Well, what's wrong with that? At least they could both ride it. Now, we've been all over this before, and I don't intend to go over it again. What? Aren't you asleep yet? I heard them. I don't like to hear Mom and Dad talk like that. They'll be all right, as soon as we get this pony business settled. Maybe Shetland would be all right. What about Prince? Ah, uh, he's all right, but if Mom wants us to have a Shetland, maybe we should. But you always said they can't go fast like Prince. Anybody knows that, but we could still have fun with the Shetland. I guess, I guess there's no other pony in the world like Prince. When he's out in the pasture, I don't even have to whistle. He comes galloping up like he was going to jump right over the fence. And then he nuzzles my pocket like he knew just where the sugar is. And how he goes when I give him his head. His feet pound the dirt just like I was a pony express rider being chased by Indians makes the wind whistle right around my ears. An old Shetland could never do that, could he? Better get to sleep now before we catch a dick. Night. Son, I'm all through. But don't you let Donnie come in here. 
wouldn't want him to see that tree before Santa Claus gets here. Can I stay up tonight and help trim it? Sure. When's Mom and Donnie coming back from the store? Well, I don't know. Your mother had some last minute shopping to do. What do you got in the sack? Uh, some apples. I bought them for Prince, for his Christmas present. Son, do you think uh, Prince would like a new home for Christmas? What do you mean, Dad? Well, I haven't told you before, and I won't go into detail now. But your Aunt Betty sets you the money for a Christmas present so you can buy Prince. Man alive! Prince is gonna be mine! I can ride it every day in the year, and teach him tricks, and go camping with him in the summer, and me and Donnie can... Dad, you think... I mean, maybe I shouldn't. I'm kind of... Now look, son. This is your Christmas present, and it's from your Aunt Betty. Now, I've endorsed it. Don't lose it. You run down to Morgan's and close the deal. Jumping, Polly Wong! Don't you bring him back here tonight now. We gotta get this place cleaned up first. Hold on tight. Get up, Tuffy. Kind of late today, aren't you? Well, it's always this way when the snow gets soft. Busiest days of the year for us. In fact, you're kind of busy, too. I saw more youngsters riding ponies today than in the middle of summer. A lot of them home from school getting spoiled by their folks. Mm -hmm. Looks as if you could do with something to warm you up. Come on in. Now, don't go to no trouble. Right on the stove. Help yourself. I can't understand people sending these things out every year. They never get any from me. Well, I expect a lot of folks don't feel that way about it, Steve. They're just glad to give something. Even if it's only a greeting. Uh, Tommy Rot wishing Merry Christmas to people he hardly speak to all year. And all this nonsense about Santa Claus and how it's the good little kids that'll get the fullest stockings. What a fairy tale to be cluttering up kids' heads with. As if marking a day in bread on the calendar makes it better than any other day. And all this singing and preaching about peace on earth and goodwill to men. Ha! He never got to know about peace and goodwill. He never even got to start living. Fine Christian boy. Not even 20 when he left, was he, Steve? 19. Just a youngster. Like all the others we sent out to fight our battles for us. Why is it always the young ones that have to do our dirty work? Why do they have to make all the sacrifices? Dying because old and useless lunkheads like me can't seem to work out the problems of this world without guns and war. That's the grudge I've got against this world. That's why Christmas is just a lot of rotten hypocrisy to me. It happened on a Christmas Eve. The last Christmas Eve he ever saw. My only son. Broke his mother's heart. A year later, she was gone too. I expect I know how you feel, Steve. But I'm just wondering if you ain't forgetting something. What's that? God gave up his only son on Christmas. When he sent him down to this miserable world of ours, knowing that he'd be nailed to the cross. But don't you see, Steve? God did that because of his love for all of us. He gave up his son so that you and me and everybody in the whole world could have our sins forgiven. And someday, be reunited with the likes of Jim. And that's what makes Christmas, Christmas Day. No, Homer. That's not for me. 
Well, I gotta be going. Still got a heap of mail there. So long. Merry Christmas, Steve. Come to buy Prince, eh? No. I want to buy Shetland. That little gray one. He said he was $75, didn't you? But I don't want him till tomorrow. Until we get his stall fixed up. Shetland? Why, all you've ever talked about is Prince. I... I just decided on a Shetland. That's all. Well, I, I guess you folks know what you're doing, but uh, isn't that going to be a pretty small pony for a boy your size? Yeah, but Donnie would be able to ride him. That'd sure make him happy. And Mama, too. What are you doing? Buying yourself a present or trying to keep peace in the family? It isn't that, Mr. Morgan. Well, what is it? Well... Donnie's my new brother. But we can only afford to buy one pony. So I've come to buy it for both of us. So we can all be happy. After all, this is Christmas. He was about your age, son, when he started pestering me for a pony. I didn't have this stable then. And I never got around to getting the pony. He kept after me year after year. It was always the same story. Couldn't afford it, uh, had no place to keep it, something like that. Before I knew it, he was in uniform. And it was too late for him to ever think of a pony again. I guess that's why, after it was all over, I, I bought a dozen ponies and started the stable. As if seeing other kids enjoying themselves would make up for, for some of the fun he never had. I don't suppose a lad your age can understand such things. Lots of us oldsters can't either. But sometimes our eyes are opened by some of the things youngsters do. Things that we are too old and too selfish to ever think of doing ourselves. I'll make out a bill of sale and you can pick up the pony whenever you want. I'll be over tomorrow. Right after church. Bye, Mr. Morgan. Bye. Hey, it looks lovely, doesn't it, dear, huh? I'm so glad it fits. I was afraid it might be too small. Thank you, dear. Oh, you're welcome. Look at what? Just like a real choo-choo. Come on, let's take this try and try it. Look at that, would you? Just look. Come on, Rod. Now, wait a minute, folks. Put your coats on first. Hello, 
boys. Hi, Chetlip. Hi, Fred. Well, this is a surprise. Morning, Mrs. Blaine. I figure the boys might need a hand to get the place fixed up. Fixed up? For the ponies. Uh, I didn't know whether he had room for two. Well, I don't understand. Rod was supposed to get the large pony. That's not what he told me. He said he wanted the Shetland. Is that true, Rod? Did you really buy the Shetland after your father said you could have Prince? Yes, Mom. But two ponies. I still don't understand. I didn't either. For some time, but I got to figuring it. Two boys and one pony don't make sense. Besides, it is Christmas. I suppose they have always been boys wanting ponies for Christmas. There always will. But we are apt to forget that they don't stay boys very long. And after a while, they've left us, and it's too late for ponies and anything else. Here are the bills of sale. For Prince and the Shetland. I'm a little ashamed, Austin. Ashamed of resenting your sister's gift to Rod. But I'm so terribly happy to know that Rod's love for all of us was so great. Well, now then, cut that out. If you know what's good for you, you'd, you'd better shine up to your new master. <laughs> Merry Christmas, son. Yeah.